So long as like alchemy. Russ, KD, Warriors, Thunder, Tuesday Night, Oracle Arena. It don't get no better. Well, maybe it could for Mello. There would be no hoodie Mello on this night. Look at him roll the right ankle early on. That's probably why Jordan cut them bum-ass Mello shoes from the market. Mello, early exit. KD, now the drama's been taken out of this matchup somewhat, right? They faced each other several times, so it's not so much animosity. KD came out and did his thing, though. 33 points. You see the pulley early. Westbrook, there was no answer for him coming off the pick and roll. Is he going to switch? No, he's going to go right to the rim. And I can't tell you how many times dude went right. McCall gets worked, and the Thunder is spiked. Dude had 21 points in the first quarter, and the Thunder were all over the defending champs on their own floor. Here's more Russ, now he's just on fire. There's the pulley. And if you want to be perfectly honest about things, Oklahoma City came out and just bulldozed and bullied the Warriors. So Debo West comes in the game and he's trying to rearrange. T, look at him take a swipe at Patrick Patterson, but he misses. A T would be dished out. There would be more on the night. Here we go to end the half. Crashing down, doesn't get the finish. He gets raked in the face. And I may not like West because he's a rival. But he's a strong sister, man. So I was glad he got up. He was fine. Draymond, he got busted in the mouth too. There was tees and elbows aplenty in this game. But the funny thing is, it wasn't really competitive. KD tried to do what he did, get into the rim. But he was really the only warrior who showed up offensively. And like a 38, Paul George was special, yo. Now, not quite the elevation he used to have in his Indiana days, but just his understanding of the game and the way he's starting to fit in here in Oklahoma City. And this game was really over in the first quarter and Draymond had seen enough. Not only was he frustrated with the refereeing, which was terrible both ways, but he was also frustrated, I think, with his teammates. He, I mean, he's going to give maximum effort every night, but that was not the case from some of these other guys on this championship team. So Draymond cuts the check and heads to the showers early on. But Oklahoma City, man, they weren't done. They kept their foot on the pedal trying to make a statement. Aquaman, not only can he swim, he can dunk. Look at him finish at the rim. Adams was huge on the offensive glass. PG-13, 38-5-3 as the Thunder snap a four-game losing streak and put the champs on notice. All right, y'all. And you know what I noticed, man, and this, this is no, this is just an observation, but whenever the Warriors take an L, my views on my main channel here, um, they're quite less. They're about, they're about two thirds the normal views because I get it. Sometimes, you know, you, Warrior fans aren't used to taking losses these days and you don't want to see the loss, but some of the losses need to be addressed and need to be talked about, right? And uh, shout out some of my young guys on my Patreon you know, they were more concerned than I was. Maybe they saw it. They saw it before I did. And this is just one of those games where it was more important than just a normal game. We've all heard about the all-star break talk, the mental and physical fatigue, and all the excuses you want. And I subscribe to most of these theories because I, I just believe them. And I still think they are at play. But this game, Reggie Miller said it himself during the telecast, there's certain games it doesn't matter where you're at in the season, who's active, who's hot, who's not, you have to get up for those games. For Reggie, it was the Knicks with Indiana, right? And this was one of those games. You can go to the one, the, the, the Kevin Durant scenario makes it one of those games alone, never mind the fact that they're one of the teams that could possibly knock us off our back-to-back -back title run. So there's all the reason in the world to get up for this game. I don't really need to explain that. But, you know, let's, I, I don't want to overblow this. Everybody says relax or oh, what this is. This was a disappointing one. I really expected him. I didn't even want to jinx nothing, but I expected a game. And don't get it twisted. I wouldn't even, it, it, it's not that we lost, it's how we lost the game. Okay. If we, if this was, a, if we lost by six points and we were, we didn't execute down the stretch, that's another story. It's how we lost the game. So I'm going to start with Steve Kerr. At the risk of, you know, at the risk of judging a movie before it's over, Steve Kerr needs to make some changes, right? It's The movie's not done. The season's not done. But it's halftime. It's intermission of the show. And things are looking a little scary from a Warriors fan's perspective and from the Warriors themselves. Steve Kerr, it... It just appears that he's not really coaching. He, he seems to have too soft a hand. Everything is okay. Everything is relaxed. We hear about Kerr having some fire behind closed doors, and we see him snap a, a, a clipboard every now and then, right? And he'll get a tee against the refs. 
but we never publicly see any aggression really towards any players. He snapped at PMAC a couple times. You know, he's shown some, some, some visible signs of frustration, but nothing on like a pop level or even pulling a star out and saying, hey, man, sit your ass down. Right. Very, very rarely. And it just appears to me at this point right now, his, his soft hand at coaching is hurting this team. It's time to make some adjustments schematically. If you talk about this game, the length and the physicality of Adams, Paul George, and, and their wing players, even Russell Westbrook, this motion offense with all these extra passes, that's not the business against a matchup like this. You need to be aggressive, straight line, downhill drives, attack the rim, and suck them in. The extra passes, that's what they excel at. You're playing right into their hands, and it just seems like strate strategically, Golden State's lacking. It's time for Steve Kerr to really earn his coaching chops because I've been a Steve Kerr defender. I've said myself like, yo, it's the subtleties. It's managing egos and personalities and stars. It's not so much the X's and O's of the game. Well, now, Steve, we kind of need you to make some adjustments. The whole league has been watching us dominate for the last four seasons. And so they know every play we run, hell, they run it themselves. So they know how to defend it. And then they're, they're building their team specifically to beat us. So we're no longer light years ahead, right? We're, we, are we even ahead at this point? And again, I don't want to jump. I'm just calling it how I see it. Is it the end of the world? No, but right now, that margin for error and that gap between the Warriors and the rest of the league, it's not there. It doesn't exist like it used to. But the players, and Steph Curry in particular, seem to believe that it still does. And so, like I said, Steve Kerr needs to motivate better. We keep hearing them talking about how they're coming out flat. It takes until the third quarter. Well, I don't know, I don't know what, what other sport, but in basketball, you always hear that's on the coach, right? How the team comes out, that's on the coach. That's the game prep. Where's the, I don't know if it takes a rah-rah speech. For me, again, I think he needs to show a little bit of tough love to some of these dudes. Easier said than done when you have four future Hall of Famers on your roster. But again, right now at intermission at halftime, it looks like you may need to change. You need you may need to grow as a coach, Steve Kerr. You've got he's got this staff, right? Mike Brown's a yes man. He's just gonna smile and shuffle his feet. And Ron Adams, from what I understand, is a very strategic individual guy. He works with guys individually. He's not necessarily a voice in the huddle, and he's not a big you know he has he has the defensive game plan at heart. But really, offensively, we need to change some things. Now, we know the bench is underachieving, okay? So that's part of the issue. But I want to go back to Steph Curry. And I had a healthy conversation on Twitter with, with some, some people, and it was, it was all love, man. I, I, I appreciate their point of view. And I, everybody knows I get a little hard on Steph uh, with some of the mistakes, and I put maybe more of the blame than some people think I should on Steph. But you can't have it both ways. If Steph Curry is the face of the franchise, we've heard it from everybody. Kevin Durant is the best player. Steph Curry is the most important player. We've heard it from Durant himself. Steph Curry is the leader of the team. We take his lead. So when he comes out and he's playing with half the effort of Draymond Green and half the effort of slow-ass Zaza Pachulia, that's problem number one in a matchup like this. I call it how I see it. These big game matchups... With the exception of Boston. Boston, he showed up. But if you want to look at, at historically these big game matchups, he comes out and he kind of just cruises. And I say that to say this. Draymond Green, his turnovers are very frustrating. We all admit that particularly the outlet passes and some of the passes that are forced. But you need to realize it's cause and effect. It's all a chain and it starts at the head of the snake. And the head of the snake is Steph Curry. So when Steph Curry is under aggressive and passive, head down, poor body language, playing hot potato with the basketball, what do you think that forces Draymond Green to do? He's got to be over aggressive and he's got to force the issue because he's trying to wake up his superstar. And so I don't really place a lot of blame. Yes, Draymond's frustrating with his turnovers, but that's not the root of the problem. Draymond brings it every damn night. And if Steph Curry was more aggressive and more consistent with his effort, we wouldn't have these outbursts from Draymond Green. Yes, he's going to always talk and he's always going to bark. He's gonna, that's his, his nature. But I'm saying it would limit 
some of these frustrating outbursts and over-aggressive phases of the game that we see from Draymond Green. So I love Steph. He is the most gifted player, one of the most gifted players I've ever seen, but your strength is your weakness, and he coasts. And for him to not get up in this game, it was so ironic. There was about a 90 seconds left in the third quarter. The game was over. And all of a sudden, dude had a pep in his step. All of a sudden, I hadn't seen a move like that all night long. All of a sudden, he had his little step bounce. And it was like, bruh, the game's over. The game's over. Okay? So you can't have it both ways. I love Steph. He's the MVP. He's the leader. But just like in football, the quarterback gets all the credit. He's going to get all the blame. Overall, Golden State, you hear this fatigue, right? And it's true. It really is there. But you can't always be a counter puncher. Eventually, you finna get knocked out. If you're you're always bobbing and weaving and waiting and playing the game and letting for teams to take their swing, you start getting knocked on the chin, and that's what's happening. Okay, so OKC's legit. Paul George is amazing. The mellow injury probably hurt them overall. I mean, helped them overall in this game just because of the way it played out. Russ, they let Russ get, I mean, how many times do you let Russell Westbrook go right? I know it's easier said than done, but my God, force him left. He had four right-handed driving dunks in the first quarter. Again, most of that's on coaching. But the effort, it was so apparent that their effort level was twofold from the start. It wasn't even funny. They're just, they're, it's hard. I've said this before, right? It's hard to simulate hunger. OKC's way more hungry. You know, we've got, we gotten a little bit fat. You know, back to the fighting analogy. You remember Anderson Silva in his reign? You remember when he finally lost to Chris Weidman? And it was just like, what is he doing? And he was just swaying, swaying. And he was, he was like, he's not even fighting back. What's Anderson doing? It's almost like he wants to get knocked out. I'm going to leave that there, man, but it's just it was just one of those things, man. It was crazy. Now, the trade deadline is on Thursday. What are, what are we here? It's Tuesday, almost almost Wednesday morning. So what? We got like 48 hours. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Maybe this forces Bob Myers to fix this bench unit or get some somebody with some nuts. Draymond can't carry this load. Shout out to David West for trying to rearrange the whole front line of OKC's teeth. But David West is 39, 38 years old, right? He can only play in spurts. We need some more toughness and some more grit headed to the playoffs. I'll leave you with one trade. They announced, I read this about 24 hours ago, the Phoenix Suns are willing to part with Tyson Chandler and Jared Dudley. Now, I don't know how it happens. We've seen Myers work his magic in the past. I'm not unrealistic. I'm not going to say, go get Aaron Gordon, go get Lou Williams. You think any of these teams, the problem with us making a trade is, 98% of the league doesn't want to fuck with us. Why? Because we've been dominating everybody. No one wants to help us. But I'm putting that out there. A team, a bottom feeder team, if we could somehow get two vets that know how to let their things swing in the moment, maybe that will be what we need to get us right. But again, this is intermission. It's just halftime of the season, and maybe your boy Alchemy's jumping to conclusions but you wanted to hear the 100, you wanted to see what was on my mind, get that off my chest for y'all. Hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.